Benjamin Netanyahu later this week in Israel. They'll discuss progress on the deal to ease some sanctions against Iran in exchange for concessions on their nuclear program. Democrat and Republican critics are pushing back, saying they don't trust Iran's leaders. They want fresh sanctions to keep up the pressure. It's a snag in relations between the U.S. and her closest ally in the volatile Middle East. Joining me now is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Prime Minister, thanks for being here. As you know, the five permanent members of the uh, UN Security Council, along with Germany, will uh, this week sit down uh, with uh, their counterparts from Iran to once again work on a deal uh, to hopefully freeze Iran's nuclear ambitions uh, for a period of time. My question to you, because I know you are very skeptical of this and have not liked what you've heard so far, would you, is there any interim deal that you would, you would think was all right? Well, first of all, I prefer a diplomatic solution. I prefer a peaceful solution. Who wouldn't? Uh, Israel has the most to gain from a peaceful diplomatic solution because we're on the firing line any way you look at it. So we need a good solution. And that's the main point. Uh, I think the, the problem with a partial deal is that you reduce the sanctions uh, and in this case, you reduce the sanctions, let out a lot of pressure, and Iran is practically giving away nothing. It's making a minor concession, which they can reverse in weeks, and you endanger the whole sanctions regime that took years to make. So I don't think it's a good deal. I think it's a, it's a bad deal, uh, an exceedingly bad deal. It's we all, need a good deal. It's also, at this point, not a done deal. And I want to play you something that the president said uh, this week about pursuing a deal with Iran. We will have lost nothing uh, if, at the end of the day, it turns out that they are not prepared to provide the international community uh, the hard proof and assurances necessary for us to know that they're not pursuing an, uh, a nuclear weapon. So if there is a deal that provides the kind of assurances the president is talking about uh, to show that Iran is not pursuing, perhaps not in get, getting rid of what they have now, but not pursuing any further a nuclear ambition, isn't that a good place to start? Well, I, I respect the president, and uh, I know that we have a common goal to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons, and in our case, from developing the capacity to make nuclear weapons. In fact, they're not giving up any of their capacity. They have 18,000 centrifuges to enrich uranium to make the, the core of a bomb. Uh, they're not giving up even one centrifuge uh, uh, candy, not one. So they're keeping their capacity. Now, here's what could happen and might very well happen if the, uh, there are billions of dollars of sanctions uh, easement, which is what is proposed by the P5 plus one. You're going to get investors, companies and countries scrambling one after the other to try to get deals with Iran because economies and prices work on future expectations. If you took all that pressure all these years to build up the sanctions regime and it's finally working, it's finally getting there, and Iran is really on the rope, their economies uh, on the ropes, their economies close to paralysis, and all of a sudden you take off the pressure, everybody will understand that you're heading south. You're going to really be in danger of crumbling the sanctions regime. Well, so while I appreciate the intention of trying to build it back up, I think it's going to be exceedingly tough, if not impossible. I think a lot is being offered by the P5 plus one for Iran. It's getting uh, just a, an enormous deal from their point of view, and it's giving practically nothing in return. They're well, keeping their infrastructure to make nuclear bombs. But I think also to the signaling inside Iran that it's over and signaling outside Iran to many countries that will start scrambling to, uh, uh, for contracts in Iran. And it's going to be very hard to keep the sanctions regime. I think the opposite should be done. I think you should not only keep up the pressure, I think you should increase the pressure because it's finally working. And if you, if you give it up now, when you have that pressure, uh, and Iran doesn't even take apart, dismantle one centrifuge, what leverage will you have 
when you've eased the pressure. It just doesn't make sense. Well, I do want to talk to you about increasing sanctions, as you know, in the U.S. Congress. There is a move toward that. But let me just button this up by playing something that the president said, which goes precisely to the point of those sanctions that you fear uh, can, can never, uh, that, that would open up sort of a floodgate of people wanting to do business with Iran. Here's what he said. If it turns out six months from now that they're not serious, we can crank, we can dial those sanctions right back up. What about that? Well, I, well, I, I responded to that, Candy, and I think I think that in uh, in practice that may be the the uh, president's desire and, and, and intention. I have no doubt about that. But my assessment, given what I see now, I already see the. Uh, the countries and the investors and the companies uh, scrambling to get to Iran. I, I already hear that, uh, those voices. I receive that information. Everybody's getting ready to the starting line to rush to Iran uh, to give, uh, to be in part of that deal. I think, uh, on the, but if you went the other way and you not only preserve the sanctions instead of reducing them, but you actually increase them, then, you know, all these countries and all these companies will have to choose between the Iranian economy and the U.S. economy, because that's what additional sanctions mean. It means choose Iran or the U.S. That's a no-brainer. Everybody will choose the U.S. Uh, siding up with the increased sanctions. Everybody has up to now. And if you continue the pressure now, you can get Iran to cease and desist. Because, you see, the options aren't really a bad deal, and this is a bad deal, or war. There's a third option, sanctions. Increase the sanctions. And, in fact, if you do a bad deal, you may get to the point where your only option is a military option. So a bad deal actually can lead you to exactly the place you don't want to be. I think if you want a peaceful solution as I do, then the right thing to do is ratchet up the sanctions.